Welcome back. It's my honor to be presenting this information to you. Uh, today we are talking about praise and attention and how you can use your attention uh, in the positive and to make a difference and influence those students' lives. Uh, the biggest thing that I can say is your attention is so, so powerful. Sometimes we don't realize how powerful our attention is, but and we often end up in the criticism trap where we're constantly getting on to students or reprimanding students because they're doing things that are obnoxious or annoying or frustrating. But one of the things that we talked about in our last video was setting those expectations and focusing on one expectation per week. And you may cycle through different expectations throughout the year and kind of next levels of expectations. But what is it that you want those students to do? So we talked about, okay, maybe it's just you want them to raise their hand and wait for you to call on them. So it's not just raise your hand and blurt out, but it's raise your hand and wait. That's the biggest thing um, is your waiting expectation. And so then how can you catch the students doing those things? A lot of times when we're criticizing or cor uh, correcting a student, we give them eye contact. We say, look at me. We tell them what they're doing wrong. We tell them why it's wrong. We um, demand that they look at us. We demand that eye contact and that undivided attention. Well, that attention is higher in quality and it's also higher in quantity than our praise. So a lot of times when students are doing the right thing, we either say, well, that's what they're expected to do. And so we don't provide any attention to it or we provide very generic um, time limited attention. So we say good job or way to go. Well, those are two words. Whereas if you're getting on a student, again, you told them why and what and when and where and how they should do it. Um, and so it's usually a lecture. So when you're giving praise, you want to make sure you tell them what they did right, why it was right, why it was important. If you think it, say it. Um, and so how can you leave that praise in multiple forms? A lot of times when we correct kids, well, the whole class hears you get onto a student um, or correct a student. And sometimes students develop reputations or a name for themselves, not based on their academics or their athletic ability, but based on the fact that they're always in trouble. And so how can we take that attention and reallocate it or re um, distribute it so that we're focusing more on the things that we want to see and minimizing our attention on the things that we don't want to say. It doesn't mean that you're ignoring them. It doesn't mean that you don't care. It just means that you are deliberately lowering the quality and lowering the quantity of attention on those undesired behaviors and you're redistributing all of your time and your effort to the behaviors that you want to see. This is a shift that happens over time. It's not going to change behavior overnight. Sometimes punishment has an immediate decrease in behavior, so we tend to rely on punishment more, but it's a temporary decrease in behavior. Whereas if you redistribute or reallocate that attention, it tends to have more lasting long-term effects. So how can you leave that praise in multiple forms? Think about in your classroom, I've heard of teachers doing a praise journal, and what's in the praise journal is they have a notebook in the class where they write things that students have done uh, in the class that they appreciate and then they go back and they review that. One thing that's great about that praise journal is if you use that with older students, other students can leave uh, anonymous or um, signed notes in there of things that they saw other students doing. And so then you read those at the beginning of the day. Students are then able to see what was found that was happening throughout the day and they're able to get attention from other peers in their classroom. Leave post-it notes. Post-it notes are a great way to increase your attention uh, for things that you want to see. And so you can just write on a little post-it note, I caught you doing this today. I appreciate that. Um, or today you opened the door for someone. Today you waited when your hand was uh, raised. Or whatever that is, you opened the door, you um, shared your pencil, you were on class or on time to class, you brought your homework back from class. So what can you leave on those post-it notes? Can you give group praise at the beginning of class? Can you give that group praise? Think about your social media. You can really use social media and praise. Uh, so you can take selfies, especially younger kids. They still like their teacher's attention. And so you can take selfies and you can have that scroll through at the beginning of the day. So if you see a student doing something that you like, get out your phone, take a selfie, and then put those on a rolling screen. And then students get that praise from you. They get that picture from you. They get that moment with you. And then they also get that throughout the day or however often that picture comes up on the screen. You can hand out likes. So kids love likes on Facebook. So you can have some printed out pictures that you react to students. And you can just quickly hand those out and say, hey, 
I like that. I love that. This made me smile. Um, however you want to react to those things. You can also think about uh, your TikTok or your Twitter or however that is. Twitter is just a brief tweet, um, a brief statement. And so how can you tweet about students and what they've done in your classroom? You can also do this school-wide. And so if you have classroom announcements or school-wide announcements, you can highlight students that have done things throughout the day. Um, make sure that you also provide that one-on-one -on -one praise where you pull them aside and you really tell them how important what they're doing and the effort they're giving is uh, impacting your classroom. Now, another thing that you need to remember with praise is that attention is not equal. A lot of times we say, okay, well, I need to praise everybody equally. Everybody's not getting equal attention at home. Some kids come home every day and their parents ask them how their day was. They pull out their homework. They're involved. They're at every sporting event. They're at every um, parent-teacher conference. They're pulling out their papers. They're reading their reports. Not all parents are doing that. So some parents don't ask about their day. Some parents are absent parents for whatever reason that might be. And so you need to redistribute your attention based upon your children in your classroom. And so some kids are going to require more attention from you because they're getting less at home. Whereas other kids are naturally getting a lot of attention at home and they don't need as much of that praise and attention from you. And so your praise and attention may be redistributed or unequal in your classroom, but it doesn't mean that your students are not getting equal attention. It's just some may be getting more from the parents and some may be getting more from you. Okay, um, so really think about who are those students in your classroom that you need to target to give more attention to and how can you really set that aside. Make sure to set some goals with your attention. So we get caught up in the day and the day really gets away from us and we set out with, okay, here's my goal for the day and I want to do this and I want to give more attention. But if you set a concrete goal of I am going to give five post-it notes today, I'm going to catch five students doing something uh, right today, I'm going to take four selfies today, whatever that is, set your goal in a quantifiable amount because if you quantify it and you say I want to do this many today, then you're more likely to reach that goal or to distribute that attention than if you just say I plan to give more positive attention today. So how can you quantify that goal and set that goal for the day so that you might achieve that? You won't achieve it every day because some days are a little more chaotic than others, but if you're setting that goal every day, then you're more likely to achieve it a majority of the days. Um, have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.